So now we will discuss the analysis of a specific algorithm, which is the insertion sort algorithm. We have already shown the pseudocode of insertion sort and we have talked about the RAM model. So now we'll discuss how the insertion sort algorithm needs to be uh, executed, the runtime of the algorithm we will analyze. So the uh, runtime of an algorithm is actually the, you know, the time taken by an algorithm. So how much time the algorithm will take while it's being executed on a particular computer. Now we have, we already know that the particular computer, the computing model is our RAM model. So the, uh, so this is actually the running time of a program and this is a function of the size of the input, okay? So there are multiple, multiple terms are coming up. So one term is this, you know, the, the running time. So running time is a uh, term which is important. And then another, uh, it, this is the function of the size of the input. So the input size is important. When we talked about the insertion sort, the sorting problem, we talked that uh, the, the, um, the size of the input, if the array is too large, it will take longer time. If the array is small, it will take small time. So this is very straightforward, understandable. So the size of the input most of the time means the number of elements, okay? Size of the input might mean the number of elements, okay? Number of elements. So uh, also the, suppose some operations like multiplication type of operations, okay? If it's a multiplication operation, um, so what matters is that you multiply two numbers like uh, x and y, and then the you know the the combined bit value should not be more than the word size so here number of bits is an important uh, important factor than the number of um, i number of elements to be multiplied so so here uh, so this uh, size of the input can be you know number of elements can be number of bits depends on the depends on the type of the problem so think about a, a graphical problem where we represent a graph G as a you know, set of uh, vertices V and a set of edges E. So when we talk about the set of vertices in a graph, vertices, suppose uh, Miami University, the entire campus map, where every building or you know, every small and big building can be a vertex and the edges are the paths connecting them. So that is a representation of a graph. So we need two sets of you know, input uh, elements. So uh, this is the size of the input and then another thing we need to talk which is the uh, you know the running time. So running input size we talk running time is a very important thing in the fact that uh, it will um, it will tell you how much time the algorithm will take you know um, to run on a particular input. So it will also depend on the uh, size of the input okay. So it's actually uh, it's actually you know we are trying to count the number of primitive operations or steps executed. Please understand this primitive operations means uh, what we define in the RAM model as the most realistic standard operations which can take constant amount of time like the basic arithmetic uh, logic operations, the you know, control type operations like conditional or unconditional branching, subroutine call, return, this kind of, these are the primitive operations, okay, and each of them takes some constant amount of time, okay, so it's uh, easy to uh, define them properly, so uh, this is the, uh, this particular algorithm on a particular input, uh, what are the primitive operations it will take, or the steps, okay, these are also sometimes called steps, so steps should not be machine dependent, as I said that it should not, a machine has a sorting instruction, or a machine has a particular instruction which other common machines do not have. So you cannot count those as steps, okay, one click sort. No, it's not possible. We cannot count them, okay? So steps should not be machine dependent as much as possible. Okay, then, uh, so like, like uh, algorithm you're executing, there's a one, two, three, four, five lines, suppose insertion sort code, one, two, and then three, and then four. And what happens? Two different line may take different time, okay? So this one is like suppose i equal to i minus one and this one is a for loop, okay? So these two lines might take like time t1 and this one might take time t2. But uh, if you just execute step three, okay? It should as many number of times as you execute, but every time it should take the fixed time. So that's a constant time for each 
uh, each individual statement okay so two different lines may take different times okay so two different lines may take different time to execute but the ith line suppose this is the ith line should always take ci okay ci is a constant so as i said that uh, one particular line always should take the same amount of time that should be a constant amount of time okay so these are the uh, in the analysis of algorithm these are the two things you are talking one is the size of the input which sometimes can be the number of elements, sometimes can be the number of bits, sometimes can be, you know, the different uh, sets uh, of elements. And the, another thing is the running time, which is actually the counting of steps, counting of steps or the primitive operations uh, being required for executing that algorithm. And in those steps, we know that multiple steps can might need multiple different time as we define in the RAM model that individual operations have constant amount of time to execute but for a particular line it will take a particular you know constant amount of time always and that will not change uh, so that has to be machine independent so once we have uh, explained that what is the running time and what is the input size of an algorithm we are trying to analyze the running time of insertion sort we said that um, every uh, every individual statement should take constant amount of time so if we can measure that that cost that time cost and we see how many times that statement is being executed we just multiply the two and then we sum up those values for all the uh, you know steps of the uh, pseudocode and then we can find the total running time of an algorithm so we did exactly same thing here so this is the insertion sort procedure which is a sorting algorithm which i explained before using an example and uh, it takes an input uh, array a okay so for j equal to 2 to a dot length all this uh, explanation of this algorithm i have done before so i'll just uh, tell you the cost and the times so how many times this uh, executes from j equal to 2 to a dot length okay so this is a, a for loop you have to understand that the 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 conditional statements or the loops they execute one more time than the uh, in the you know statements within that condition for j equal to 2 to a dot length this will execute n time okay the first element is uh, not there and uh, when it's uh, you know a dot length is already there one last time it will check so this will check n times and suppose the cost is constant cost is c1 so first statement cost is c1 second statement is just an assignment statement where a j is stored in uh, the variable key it will be executed n minus one time because the last time it will not enter because this condition the, uh, the first condition will not be satisfied so it will be any statement inside a loop or a conditional uh, statement will be executed one time less okay so and then and the cost assume is c2 now this third one uh, is a comment it will also be executed n minus one time but the cost is zero because this is a comment this is not uh, not an executable statement okay so uh, next uh, we see this condition which is i equal to j minus one this is also inside the for loop so also it will be executed n minus one time and i assume the cost is c4 then there's a while loop okay so um, uh, this is also a condition so the condition will be executed uh, suppose for every time every time that uh, you know the for loop for every iteration of the for loop this while statement is uh, tested tj times okay uh, so so every value of j this is tested uh, tj times so um, and the cost suppose is j is c5 so if this is tested tj time then any instruction within the loop will be tested one uh, one less okay because the loop is always tested one last time uh, before making sure that it cannot enter anymore so it will be tj minus one the statement six and uh, assume the cost is c6 then the seventh is i minus one it will also be executed tj minus one time like this one and assume the cost is c7 and while coming out of the loop uh, we are still inside the for loop so it will be um executed n minus one time okay and assume the cost is c8 now as i said the total uh, cost of the execution of the insertion sort algorithm will be uh, every step we uh, you know multiply the cost and the time cost and the time and then we sum them up 
So exactly that we did C1 times N, C2 times N minus 1, C4 times N minus 1, you see, in that way until C8 times N minus 1. We just sum them, the, uh, sum the costs. Very, very simple. Okay. Uh, so um, now the best case is, uh, assume what is the best case of insertion sort. Uh, we have seen uh, the example run and we can see that if the insertion sort is already you know this is like one two three then suppose these two are sorted and then uh, it's in the hand and then three comes in so we check okay the value of uh, you know i is uh, j minus one this is j equal to uh, three uh, i equal to two and we check if this two is uh, greater than three or less than three is less than three so then uh, we do not need to check in this loop it will be added at the end okay so this loop is actually not uh, being executed at all so in that case uh, i mean tj how many times this loop is executed so it's just one time check okay so tj equal to one but no need to go inside this loop because uh, uh, this condition is being not being satisfied ai greater than key this condition is not being satisfied so it just executes one time the loop if it executes one time then anything which is inside the loop will not execute at all tj is equal to you know one minus one equal to zero this part so then what happens so uh, the array is sorted so tj equal to one okay so the tn is then uh, you know simplifying this one we'll find this the c1 plus c2 some constant times n and then minus some other constants so if we can see it clearly you will uh, find that this is a constant a and this is n so it's a times n and then b so it can be you know represented in a, as a linear you know linear uh, function of n function uh, of n okay uh, of n so this is like a n plus b so this is the uh, representation of the best case running time of insertion sort now you see the worst case worst case is what worst case is just the opposite okay when the array is reverse sorted assume this case uh, that uh, here it's like one sorry it's uh, uh, three two and then one okay so uh, it should not be like this it should be like this okay two and three and four and then we uh, bring in one so what will happen suppose this is j equal to four and i equal to j minus one that is three so when um, i uh, this one we try to you know check uh, whether four is greater than one or not yes four is greater than one so it will enter the loop so then four has to be shifted by one three has to be shifted uh, by one okay not that far this one and two also has to be shifted by one then one will be inserted here okay so you see the you know up to j times this uh, you know backtracking is being done so in that case tj will be you know equal to uh, for i mean for a particular value of j this loop will be executed from one to j time okay so this is that's why uh, so if j equal to if j equal to uh, suppose that's just a second element two then uh, i will be executed i mean this while loop will be executed how many times one time uh, j equal to three while loop will be executed two times okay in that way j equal to uh, four so while loop will be executed uh, three times so okay so for j equal to two to uh, a dot uh, length uh, then it will be you know sum up you know one times two times three times in that way so if we sum it up so sum equal you know j equal to two to n for this for loop how many times this while loop executed j equal to two to n j uh, sum of j is n into n plus one by two minus one this is a series summation formula in uh, in a you know appendix of corman you'll find all the series summation formula you should remember them because we need to use them and uh, if tj equal to this you know here then uh, tj minus one will be you know this j minus one times one times less this will be tested n to n minus one by two now if we put those values of j in this formulation 
then you will find we get a formula which is like tn equal to uh, something you know some constant time n square plus some constant time n minus some constants okay so if we see this represent so this is like assume that this all the constant together is like a all the constant together is like b so it, this is uh, this can be represented as the a n square plus b n plus c okay so this is a quadratic formulation quadratic formulation in terms of n quadratic form uh, in terms of n in terms of n okay this is a quadratic formulation in terms of n so uh, you can see that the best case is a n plus b and the worst case is a n square plus b n plus c now you can see that um, when uh, suppose n grows very largely okay very fast and very large then you can see that n squared is actually beating any other you know suppose n square uh, n is equal to 5 then a n square equal to a is like, like uh, suppose it's 2 so it's 2 times 25 okay but b n equal to uh, b is suppose also 2 2 times 5 is 10 so in that way you will see that the the leading term is a n square and the growth rate of this is very very fast much faster than uh, any other you know, trailing terms uh, so we can say so in that's why there is a concept called order of growth in algorithms where we say that uh, we only consider the leading uh, consider leading term okay leading term so in this case we'll consider like a n square for a quadratic uh, for quadratic for a n for linear okay so uh, now even for that from that we can even just forget this a because this is not going to make much difference a is anyway it's a constant and uh, the input size the n is most important so if a is a fixed number um, it will not make much difference if it's a 2 it will double if it's 5 it will make it 5 times or the n square the growth rate of n square is much faster so this is called order of growth or also you know rate of growth uh, of a, of an algorithm here one thing i want to tell you that uh, execution of uh, an algorithm uh, is measured by the order of growth uh, and here uh, another thing is that the best case is a, is a bogus analysis okay best case doesn't give you any any idea what gives you an idea is a worst case because worst case is actually uh, you know upper bound you know it's a worst case means that this will not take more time than this so when I give for an algorithm okay that for a, a best case okay it will run like in uh, two seconds this algorithm so but it does not say that uh, I mean that for what about the worst uh, if it's n is like uh, you know 5 million how much time it will take so best case has no actual meaning in computational analysis the worst case has meaning because worst case tells you for any number of n, any value of the input size the algorithm will never take more than you know order of n square time uh, you know to finish it so we can say a order of n square or like a theta of n squared algorithm is better is better uh, than an algorithm than theta n cube algorithm okay so theta n cube means uh, it's an order of growth is on the order of uh, you know n to the power 3 and this is definitely much better than that but the best algorithm will be theta of n which is you know smaller than um, either of them so uh, there are other uh, operations like theta of n log n or theta of just log n they are you know theta of n log n is cheaper or uh, you know have less running time than theta of n and theta of n has less than theta of n log n in that way uh, the order of growth or the rate of growth will give you a very nice idea about what kind of running time the algorithm will take 
there is another analysis which is the average case for insertion sort the average case analysis will be like um, what is the you know assume that it's not sorted or reverse sorted but some elements are in sorted order some in reverse sorted order so in that case this j will be you know rep uh, replaced with j by 2 um, assuming you know half is sorted half is not sorted and then still there will be an n square factor so the average case analysis kind of difficult doesn't really give you a lot of idea but most of the time it kind of you know aligns with the worst case and overall this is the analysis of insertion sort.